the 10 most polluted rivers in the world. These waterways can cause physical discomfort and skin diseases at best, and at worst, simply standing on their banks can be fatal. As the saying goes, the land shapes its people. But why have these life-sustaining rivers become so contaminated and dangerous? In this edition of Guidepedia, we'll explore which rivers around the world are the most polluted. Click subscribe. May we all have access to clean water sources. The Pasig River in the Philippines. Looking at photos alone, you might find it hard to imagine this is actually a river. Its surface is completely covered with various garbage like plastic containers and bottles, and you can almost smell the stench through your screen. What's even more surprising is that this river flows through one of the most densely populated areas in the world, Manila, the capital of the Philippines. This waterway, named the Pasig River, stretches for approximately 15 and a half miles and was once the region's most important waterway with rich ecological resources. However, as the local population expanded without adequate sewage treatment planning, the Pasig River became a collection point for household waste and industrial effluence. By the 90s, due to severe water pollution and extremely low oxygen levels, all aquatic life in the Pasig River was completely wiped out. The Philippine government has made multiple attempts to address the issue, but with minimal success. Residents along both banks live alongside garbage daily, surrounded by the river's foul odor, whether it's sunny or raining. According to data from the Philippines Environmental Management Bureau, in 2020, the entire Manila area generated over 9.7 million pounds of garbage, including 140,000 pounds of plastic waste. Combined with the river's winding course and slow flow, solid waste floats on the surface and accumulates over time. Research from the American Association for the Advancement of Science shows that plastic waste from the Pasig River accounts for approximately 6.43% of global ocean plastic, making it one of the most severely plastic-polluted rivers in the world. In an effort to restore the Pasig River to its clean state, a local environmental group called River Warriors conducts cleaning operations at the riverbank every morning. Their sole objective is to collect garbage, hoping to leave a clean river for future generations. The Spanish Red Wine River Sometimes a river's pollution isn't just visible on the surface. It can also be filled with hidden dangers. Take, for example, the Blood Red River that winds through Andalusia, Spain. It has a beautiful name, the Red Wine River. However, this beautiful natural feature is extremely dangerous. If someone accidentally falls into the Red Wine River, they might completely dissolve without a trace. Even hard metals can melt instantly. The reason the Red Wine River has become this way is related to heavy metal pollution. According to research, when the river was first discovered, it was actually very clear. Beginning around 3000 BC, local residents started mining in the area. The riverbed contained not only large amounts of iron, but was also rich in copper, gold, and other minerals. Countless gold seekers came here to dig for treasures, a practice that only gradually stopped in the last decade or so. The extended period of mining caused mineral waste to accumulate. Combined with mine leakage accidents, the river gradually turned red and highly acidic. Apart from some bacteria and acid-resistant algae, anything that falls in will be completely destroyed. Taking just one sip would be like drinking diluted sulfuric acid instantly causing severe internal damage. Despite the Red Wine River being both dirty and dangerous, countless tourists are still attracted to it, wanting to witness this dreamlike, Mars-like landscape. However, if you visit, be sure to heed the warning signs nearby. Never touch the water. Lake Karake, Russia. In Western Russia, there's a small freshwater lake that appears calm with beautiful scenery. However, it is one of the most polluted areas in the world. Standing by the lake for just one hour would result in death. This is because it is located near Oziorsk, a former Soviet nuclear weapons factory. The lake is filled with discarded radioactive waste. In 1957, containers storing nuclear waste exploded, causing nuclear contamination across approximately 3,500 square miles of surrounding area. Ten years later, a severe drought occurred in the Lake Karakay region. 
As the lake water gradually evaporated, radioactive materials in the lake were exposed again, worsening the spread of toxic substances. Data shows that the radiation level in the lake is 600 Rankins per hour. This intensity is sufficient to kill any living organism, including humans, within one hour. Therefore, Lake Karakay is known as Russia's most toxic lake. No matter how beautiful its scenery may be, no one dares to approach it casually. The Blue Lagoon of England In Derbyshire, England, there is a place called the Blue Lagoon. It was formerly a quarry that later formed into a lake. From a distance, the lake appears blue-green and the scenery is quite pleasant. However, upon closer inspection, the lake contains various car wreckage, animal remains, and human waste that has dissolved into the water. This not only makes the Blue Lagoon extremely dirty, but has also caused the water's pH level to reach 11.3, making it nearly as toxic as high-concentration bleach. A single small droplet of this water can cause severe burning sensations on your skin. Accidentally drinking, it could lead to fungal infections or even gastrointestinal cancer. For this reason, signs have been erected around the lake warning visitors not to come into contact with the water. Nevertheless, many people are still deceived by the beautiful blue color and play in the highly toxic water, which is truly a brave act. If people hadn't littered and caused this beautiful lake to contain such deadly toxins, it could have become one of the most attractive tourist destinations not only in England but perhaps the entire world. The Cuyahoga River The dark surface of the Cuyahoga River glistened with an eerie shine. As a train passed by, it suddenly ignited a massive blaze. Just how polluted was America's Cuyahoga River? In the 19th century, the Cleveland area in Ohio rapidly industrialized, taking advantage of its proximity to the Great Lakes. Steel manufacturing and oil refining became the region's pillar industries. At that time, regulations only required that waste disposal should not interfere with or obstruct navigation with no consideration for environmental protection. As a result, the Cuyahoga River became an industrial dumping ground. Over 60 miles of the river were severely polluted, with oil slicks and garbage floating on the surface. Aquatic life nearly disappeared, and the stench was so persistent that locals eventually became desensitized to it. At noon on June 22, 1969, a fast-moving train created sparks against the rails, instantly igniting the Cuyahoga River surface, which was covered with oil and waste materials. The fire nearly engulfed the entire watershed, causing immeasurable economic damage. After Time magazine reported on the incident, the fire gained national attention. Famous rock musician Randy Newman specifically wrote the song Burn On About It, which became popular across America. Simultaneously, the fire catalyzed the development of the American environmental movement and federal environmental legislation. From this incident, America gained an enforceable Clean Water Act. Between 1972 and 1989, the federal, state, and local governments invested substantial funds in cleaning up the Cuyahoga River. Multiple wastewater treatment plants were built, and businesses faced enormous fines if they failed to comply with pollution regulations. Some power plants were shut down, and certain dams along the river were removed. After 40 years of effort, the Cuyahoga River has finally been restored to life. The Yellow River of China The Yellow River is the sixth longest river in the world, with a mainstream length of 3,395 miles. It flows through nine provinces before finally emptying into the Bohai Sea. The dirtiness of the Yellow River stems from two main factors. First, it has an extremely high sediment content. The middle reaches of the river flow through the Lus Plateau, where tributaries bring in massive amounts of silt. In 1933, the sediment load reached an astonishing 3.91 billion tons, making it the river with the highest sediment concentration in the world. This causes the water to appear muddy and turbid, giving the impression of being very dirty. The second factor relates to improper pollution control measures. For example, in Lanshao, 
the only city through which the Yellow River flows directly, authorities identified 144 pollution discharge points in 2015. Drainage pipes, some 20 feet in diameter, discharged large volumes of wastewater directly into the Yellow River. Industrial wastewater mixed with domestic sewage containing toilet paper, along with various non-biodegradable packaging materials, made the river both foul-smelling and black, with visible oil slicks that deter tourists. In recent years, with improved pollution control, protection, and restoration of the upstream ecosystem, the dirty and disorderly condition of the Yellow River has begun to improve. The River Thames of England the River Thames is England's second largest river, stretching 215 miles. It flows through numerous cities before reaching the sea via London, the capital. In the hearts of the English people, it holds a fatherly presence. However, behind its scenic beauty lies a notorious past. In the 19th century, as England rode the winds of the Industrial Revolution, rapid urbanization and industrialization brought tremendous pollution. Paper mills, smelting plants, fertilizer factories, paint factories, and many other industrial facilities discharge their wastewater directly into the river. Sewage from towns and villages along the way also contributed significantly. By 1857, London alone was dumping 250 tons of fecal matter into the Thames every day. Unfortunately, the Thames also experienced tidal flows, which pushed sewage and garbage back into London. In June 1858, the Great Stink incident erupted. London was experiencing unusually high temperatures at the time. The waste produced by three million people floated and fermented on the surface of the Thames. Under the scorching sun, the pungent odor enveloped the entire city with the heat waves. From aristocrats to commoners, no one could escape the clutches of the Great Stink. Residents complained that closing their windows made them dizzy from the heat while opening them made them sick from the stench. Members of Parliament meeting along the Thames could not continue their sessions due to the foul air and fled the building with handkerchiefs covering their noses and mouths. Despite this, the Thames remained the primary water source for London residents. Between 1831 and 1866, London experienced four consecutive cholera outbreaks due to severe water pollution, claiming more than 40,000 lives. From redirecting sewage to controlling pollution, England spent a century restoring the Thames to the condition we see today. The Ganges River of India Green water, pungent odors, floating garbage, and various human and animal corpses. This is India's mother river, the Ganges. Its basin covers one-third of India's territory, yet ranks among the six most polluted rivers in the world today. According to statistics from 2020, the population in the Ganges Basin has reached 1 billion people. Almost all domestic wastewater flows directly into the Ganges without treatment, amounting to 130,000 tons daily. Influenced by traditional culture, devotees regard the Ganges as a sacred river. Every day, tens of thousands of people visit the Ganges to bathe and perform various religious ceremonies, such as pouring milk and flowers into the river scattering flour, and even practicing water burial and cremation rituals. These customs have filled the river with various remains. Additionally, more than 400 leather factories line the banks of the Ganges. Each day, they discharge large volumes of wastewater containing chemicals and carcinogenic substances. This wastewater enters the Ganges without any treatment whatsoever. These factors have resulted in not only turbid and foul-smelling water, but also E. coli levels exceeding normal ranges by 280 times. Once, a Japanese female internet celebrity developed severe allergic reactions and fever just one hour after bathing in the river. Yet devotees remain blind to this pollution, firmly believing the Ganges is the purest sacred river. Those who bathe regularly suffer from serious skin diseases and digestive tract illnesses. Tragically, more than 4,800 people died daily from contact with or consumption of this contaminated water source. Over the past decades, the Indian government has invested for billion rupees, approximately $54 million, to establish and improve water treatment systems. 
However, due to religious beliefs, economic pressures, and institutional issues, the Ganges' severe condition remains unchanged.